the Shovel Lizard, a resilient survivor that withstood the Great Dying. This is the Lystrosaurus. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dinosaur Channel. This is your home on the internet for all things dinosaur and prehistoric. I'm your host, Tall, and today I feel like I work at the Dominion Bar and Grill. Well, welcome down to Jurassic World Dominion Bar and Grill. How can I take your order? Like, this is a Carl's Jr. Jurassic World Dominion hat and the Dr. Pepper Jurassic World shirt, and it just makes me look like, I, it looks like a uniform. Like, Universal should hire me to be their weird, random employee. Wow, that was a big tangent. Anyways, this is your home on the internet for all things dinosaur and prehistoric, and today we're not going to be talking about a dinosaur. We'll be talking about a therapsid. My friends, let's take into everything you need to know about the Lystrosaurus. But before we jump into that, make sure that you leave us a dino-sized thumbs up and comment down below your favorite dinosaur or prehistoric animal. Subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single dino quick dive that we do in the future. As well, you can become a member on this channel, join and unlock cool icons and emojis you can use when interacting with our channel. Because we are covering every single animal in the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park franchise, and let's jump right into the amazingly cute Lystrosaurus. So what does Lystrosaurus actually mean? Well, the name Lystrosaurus means shovel lizard. This prehistoric animal is said to have been a powerful digger that nested in burrows or underground shelters. So where and when did the shovel lizard live exactly? Well, the Lystrosaurus lived in the prehistoric supercontinent of Pangaea during the late Permian period up to the early Triassic period around 260 to 240 million years ago. That's a long time ago, friends. Lystrosaurus fossil sites have been widespread. They have been found in diverse regions of the world from Africa to India, China, Mongolia, Russia, and Antarctica, which was not over the South Pole at the time. It was so widespread that its fossils were being used as biogeographic evidence for continental drift and land bridging. So you might be asking yourself, why is there an abundance of Lystrosaurus fossils? Well, I think it's time for a good old fashioned side note. The Lystrosaurus was one of the few creatures to survive a global extinction called the Permian Triassic Extinction. You might've learned about this in school. Also known as the Great Dying. This event happened 250 million years ago and killed 95% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species. Lystrosaurus was pretty common in the early Triassic and may have formed as much as 95% of the total known vertebrate population. It is thought that after the Permian extinction, there was a lack of both competitive herbivorous animals and large predators, making Lystrosaurus the dominant land vertebrate of the time. Okay. Side note over. So what did the Lystrosaurus actually look like? So again, this was not a dinosaur, nor was it really a reptile. The Lystrosaurus was a therapsid from a group of often described as mammal-like reptiles branch of synapsids or proto-mammals. Therapsids evolved into mammals. Many of the traits today seen as unique to mammals had its origin early within the therapsid family, such as limbs that were oriented more underneath the body, as opposed to sprawling of the posture of many reptiles and salamanders. So the Lystrosaurus was a dicenodon. Therapsid. Dicenodonts were herbivorous animals with a pair of tusks. The name itself means two dog toothed. Members of these groups also possessed a horny, typically toothless beak, which is unique amongst all synapsids. All right, so the Lystrosaurus was a mammal-like reptile with a pair of tusk-like canine teeth, narrow nostrils, and a beak. This creature has been described as strange-looking, snub-nosed, and looked like a cross between a pig and a lizard and also a little bit of a triceratops, very strange. It is actually kind of cute in my opinion, like an ancient grumpy pig. Also, the Lystrosaurus had a short but powerful pair of legs, a barrel-shaped body and a short tail. It was heavily built approximately the size of a pig and it grew somewhere between 1.9 feet or 0.6 meters and 8.2 feet or 2.5 meters long, depending on the species, and possibly weighed about 100 to 200 pounds or 50 to 90 kilograms. So did the Lystrosaurus ever get famous? Well, this proto-mammal wasn't really well known in popular culture. It did make an appearance in the BBC TV documentary miniseries Walking with Monsters, where a herd of migrating Lystrosaurus were attacked by a Chasmatosaurus. It was also featured in an episode of the Animal Planet show Animal Armageddon, as well as the video game Ark Survival Evolved. And the Lystrosaurus will be in Jurassic World Dominion. It will be the first Dicenodon to appear in the franchise, so as early as October 2020, director Colin Trevorrow tweeted an an a new animal model, which he later confirmed to be Lystrosaurus with a coronavirus mask on. In an interview with Empire Magazine, DeWanda Wise, the actress portraying the pilot Kayla Watts, mentioned that she actually took a particular liking to the Lystrosaurus animatronic and gave it the nickname Leonard, or also known as Lenny the Lystrosaurus. Hold up, why is the Lystrosaurus in a cage? What is going to happen to this poor creature in Jurassic of World Dominion. There's actually so much controversy and a story behind it, and if you've watched Dominion, you already know, but we're not doing any spoilers. Hashtag don't spoil Dominion. We won't be talking about it. If you haven't watched Dominion yet, 
Hopefully you'll enjoy it and then you come back to this episode and just learn about this animal. And now let's talk about the diet and behavior of the Lystrosaurus. Like all Dicynodonts, the Lystrosaurus was an herbivore or a plant eater. Its tusks were thought to have been used to dig up the roots of plants that grew in that time period. Its horny beak was probably used for snipping off vegetation and the food would be on the ground against a second palate in its mouth. Since the Lystrosaurus was an herbivore, it was probably not an aggressive animal. And as we've mentioned earlier, the Lystrosaurus was one of the very very few animals that survived the mother of all mass extinctions. There were several theories as to how these guys survived. Like the name suggests, this shovel lizard was thought to be a powerful digger. The shape of the Lystrosaurus skull suggests it was a burrower, while its barrel chest may have held lungs capable of pulling in plenty of oxygen, even in dusty air. It probably spent a lot of its time actually underground. Based on the enormous number of fossils found by paleontologists, it seems that the Lystrosaurus was also a great wanderer. This therapsid may have managed to escape some of the worst effects of the mass extinction by traveling south, where it was then able to adapt and thrive in its new environment. There's also evidence suggesting the Lystrosaurus lived in Antarctica and could have entered a prolonged state of torpor or hibernation-like state to save energy during the colder season. This could have been the oldest evidence of a hibernation-like state in a vertebrate animal and indicates that torpor arose in vertebrates before mammals and dinosaurs evolved. Or maybe as a paleontologist Michael Benton put, perhaps the survival of the Lystrosaurus was simply a matter of luck. And that, my friends, was such a cool story of survival and to learn about one of these amazing Triassic animals. We haven't got a chance to cover a lot of Triassic animals. These are animals that existed long, long time ago before the age of the dinosaurs arose in the Jurassic and the Mesozoic. It's the very early days of the dinosaur evolution and it's so cool that this animal is even featured in Jurassic World Dominion that we get to talk about it now. I've known about the Lystrosaurus for years. I haven't really known it by name, but I'm so, so excited to be bringing you guys this episode because it's such a cool animal. But my friends, I do want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn on the notifications for this channel so you don't miss any quick dive we do on any dinosaur or prehistoric animal in the future. We're going to be covering every single animal in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World the franchise. As well, leave us with a dinosaur sized thumbs up and comment down below a dinosaur or prehistoric creature you would like to see us cover in the future. And of course, if you guys would like to donate to us, you can send us money on PayPal or become a member on this YouTube channel. It'll be a huge help. You'll be supporting us in the long term and you can unlock cool icons and emojis that you can use when interacting with the dinosaur channel. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye, friends.